Diabetes has been known since well before the time of Christ. The patients with diabetes mellitus did not live very long, and we did not see the complications in the eye from it. In 1921, with the discovery of insulin, it became a disease they could live with, but the complications developed very rapidly. Teams came together, including Dr. Beetham working with Dr. Jocelyn, to study the effect of patients who now were living. The next important paper, as far as the eyes are concerned, was Dr. Beetham's paper in 1935, which described the complications in the retina, proliferative diabetic retinopathy. The blood vessels in diabetes become injured, and they stop providing nutrient in the back of the eye. And when that happens is the, uh, the retina secretes uh, a growth factor and cause a uh, new blood vessel to form haphazardly. That in the 50s and 60s, we observed changes in the retina that prevented the onset of retinopathy. These were changes by other diseases, such as inflammations in the retina and choroid, which resulted in scarring, which precluded the ability of the retina to develop new vessels and hemorrhages and loss of retinal function. And we duplicated that by using a ruby laser, which fortuitously produced the kind of scars that would not create a large amount of damage. The functioning retina could summate across these scars in a way that the patient didn't realize a visual decrease. The first one was in February 1967 with this laser, this, this very machine in which we were in the broom closet we took over, took all the brooms out, cleaned it up, put the machine in there, but we had to lay the patient on a stretcher in order to do the treatment. And so most of the time the feet stuck out of the closet. The excitement was that the patient really wanted to participate in a treatment that had never been performed before. He would have me lay on the table and he'd come over with this, with this big, huge machine and then he'd have me put my thumb in back of his head and squeeze my thumb so I'd have something to focus on. And then he would bring the machine over, and his head and the machine were right over you. So that's why I had to put the thumb up and back this head. Before the laser treatment, 95% of diabetic patients would uh, uh, go blind if they lived long enough. Uh, with the photocoagulation and the study that he led with the National Eye Institute, the blindness for uh, in the diabetic patient now is only 5%. Obviously, that's a huge development. He saved my sight. I, I firmly believe that, that he, he saved me. He's the reason that I still see today after being diabetic for so long. Well, the worldwide trends are from epidemic to pandemic, so we're looking to an increase of 25 or 30 percent or more in the prevalence of diabetic mellitus, we need a way to access the patients. And the only way we're going to do that today is through telemedicine, remote site imaging and delivery of treatment to patients wherever they happen to live. When I heard about this telemedicine program, I got very excited because I said, oh, you know, what we need to do that in my country. And he immediately said, oh, what, it's wonderful to have that uh, in Venezuela. So we're testing a model among the children in Caracas, Venezuela at a public hospital there where we we're actually providing cooperative relationship with the pediatricians and the patients and the nurses and the whole group. In our service, the children go to the, to the doctors to see regular checkups for diabetes and then we take the images from, from them and then the images through internet through VPN. It, they come here to Jocelyn and they read, interpret and uh, diagnose and they do the report and the report goes back there and then you give the report to doctors and to the patients and families for follow-up. Every image I personally read and report on because 
we need to develop the, the model and create it so that it becomes automated. I would like to say that for me, Dr. Aiello is like a father. He's an incredibly nice guy, <laughs> which is um, kind of different. There are a lot of successful people, but not all my incredibly nice. <laughs> He's just a prince. He's a prince of a man.